So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sana Babili, and uh, I'm General Coordinator of C in Action, uh, an organization led by young people who aspire to bring young, the, uh, the youth of Southeast Europe closer in a spirit of understanding and uh, reconciliation. So, people of our organization, including me as well, share a belief that uh, no activities uh, towards inclusion and engagement of young people should be undertaken without uh, research on what they actually think. So this research that we are presenting here today, a comparative analysis of, of brain drain in Greece and uh, North Macedonia is uh, considered for us a starting point for making uh, our intentions a reality. So uh, we would like to thank a lot the Conrad Adenauer Foundation for its overall support and trust in our uh, capacity, as well as um, the Research Institute of the University of Macedonia for sharing their expertise with us. And last but not least, we would like to thank our partners in North Macedonia, the organization Youth Alliance Khrushchev for uh, undertaking dissemination activities on this project, as well as for their uh, dedication uh, to our joint initiative, Cooperation for a Common Future. Um, and before the presentation of uh, uh, the concept of this research and uh, the findings, I would like to uh, welcome Mr. Eleftherios Petroglos, Project Manager and Research Associate of the Conrad Adenauer Foundation in Greece and Cyprus. So Eleftheri, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mrs. Bambili. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear friends of CAS, good afternoon and welcome to this online event that CAS is with great joy supporting. Um, this happens in particular for three reasons. At first, this uh, survey focuses on a topic that has tremendous effects on social and economic level, and it will continue to undermine our future unless serious and consistent policies are applied. CAS has been working extensively with the youth, among others with its scholarship program, that aims at supporting young Greeks and Cypriots in pursuing postgraduate studies. The detrimental phenomenon of brain drain is, as we will hear in a few minutes, uh, uh, is of grave importance, not only for Greece, but also for its uh, neighboring countries. And this brings me directly to my second point. Almost four years after the signing of the PRESP agreement between Greece and North Macedonia, the reciprocal suspicion is slowly but steadily fading away. And we come to the realization that good neighborly relations can be beneficial to both parties. A lot is yet to be done. It is nonetheless particularly hopeful to see initiatives from the younger generations. And this project has been initiated and run by a youth organization a group of motivated young people that strive to create and work on a positive common agenda among the countries of Southeast Europe. Uh, one of uh, CASI's guiding principles is to build bridges. And in light of this, we are proudly supporting this project. I'd like to thank the team of Scene Action for their great cooperation and wish them all the best for their future endeavors. Greece and Cyprus will be there to assist and support. Last but not least, I'd like to thank the research unit of the University of Macedonia in Thessaloniki, particularly Dr. George Siakas, as well as Professor Maranzidis. Thank you very much and looking forward to an interesting discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Lefteri, and uh, we appreciate a lot uh, your youth-friendly and cooperation-friendly policies as an institution. Um, moving on now to presenting uh, the research uh, per se, I, I would like to welcome uh, uh, the very promising research team of Scene Action, Mr. Nikos Bakirdzis, uh, Partnership Development Manager, and uh, Ms. Segli Sakelari, um, uh, Strategic Planning Manager. And uh, I would also like to welcome um, Mr. Siakas, uh, the Research Director of uh, the Research Institute of the University of uh, Macedonia. So starting with uh, you, Nikos, I would like uh, some information on uh, the general idea and the theoretical framework of this uh, research. Great. Thank you, Anna. Uh, thank you for your kind words. And I would also like uh, to thank the Coronado of the Nara uh, Professor Marajis and Dr. Siakas for their assistance. Uh, this uh, in this in this research, um, but uh, months ago when uh, we sit down with uh, my colleagues uh, George Kukos, who unfortunately is unable to join us right now, he's in Brussels, and uh, Egli, 
uh, to sit down to 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 brainstorm about uh, issues and potential uh, potential uh, topics that we could uh, work upon. Um, we had many different ideas, but um, uh, we couldn't agree which one uh, we should choose. And at some point, we just started discussing um, what is a common thing among young people who start discussing about our future, what about, uh, what about work, what about the future of our studies, and uh, what uh, was coming, what was the main thing that was coming up? It was, would we stay, are we going to stay in Greece? Are we going abroad? Um, I mean, my, me and George, we've already um, studied abroad. I have come back, uh, George uh, is working abroad right now. Egli is, uh, will continue her studies abroad. Uh, so at some point uh, we realized that this is where discussing about about brain drain. This is this is something that affects us directly because we don't know. We want to stay. We we would like to stay in our home country. But again, there are many many things that uh, we one should take into consideration uh, when it comes to the future of, and his work future and his academic future. And um, long story short, we decided to focus on brain drain, which has become a major issue. Uh, in Greece, ever, especially after the breakout of uh, the financial crisis. Um, so I'm going to start sharing PowerPoint. Uh, I think everyone can see my, the presentation. Great. Um, so our report uh, is called the Comparative Analysis of Brain Drain in Greece and North Macedonia, Causes, Trends, and Possible Solutions. Uh, the big but who, what is brain drain? We hear it all the time, we're hearing about brain drain, but what is a brain drain? There are many, many different, many different, but also similar to some point, uh, definitions of brain drain. The one that we felt that was the, the best one that, um, describes the phenomenon the right way uh, is uh, the one given by Professor John Black, uh, who, present, uh, who described brain drain as um, the tendency for talented people from poor countries to seek employment in richer ones. Sometimes uh, this migration occurs while similar skills are needed both in poor and rich countries, but there is a big difference. The rich countries pay more for them. Um, Professor Black also um, <clears throat> points out that in many cases, brain drain also occurs because the technical and economic backwardness of poorer countries means that job opportunities um, are limited or non-existent. That is why people decide to leave their home countries to go, to go abroad to find these job opportunities. Finally, there is an aspect in the definition that we believe um, has a connection with the situation in Greece up to a certain point and the situation uh, in North Macedonia. Uh, Dr. Black said that it's also possible that brain drain is encouraged because of tendencies in poorer countries to fill good jobs as there are on a basis of family connections, political influence and corruption, while on average richer countries through subject to some of the same problems tend to fill posts on a slightly more, more meritocratic basis. This is a big issue. We've seen it um, in the Greek case. We've seen it. Uh, we discussed it with uh, colleagues and partners in North Macedonia. Um, family connections, political connections, corruption. It is a big issue. It it's, it's discouraging. People are losing their motivation, are losing hope, and moving abroad to study and work is um, th it's the only solution. Um, again, uh, after we give the definition of brain drain, we came up with certain research questions that uh, we, we hope that to answer through our, um, through our questionnaire and our research. Uh, these questions are the ones that you can see right now. First of all, do the majority of young people in the two countries prefer to study and or work in their home countries or favor seeking educational and career opportunities abroad? The second one is, what are the principal reasons which motivate individuals to study and or work abroad? How are references saved and what are the most popular options in terms of countries of choice and educational institutions? And finally, 
do these people who currently study in a foreign university or are employed in a foreign country consider returning to their home countries in the future? And if not, what is the reason? Um, these are the research questions that, as I said, we tried to answer um, throughout the questionnaire and our research. And now I would like uh, to give the floor uh, to Dr. Shakas, uh, director of uh, the research unit of the University of Macedonia, who will tell us a little, a little more about the technical aspect of the research and the questionnaire that uh, was created. Dr. Shakas, the floor is yours. Uh, great. Thank you so much about that. Uh, thank you also. I would like to publicly express my gratitude and our uh, gratitude for being uh, for getting us on board to this extremely topical project. Uh, actually, uh, it is one of uh, a set of projects that uh, bring people together, widen horizons and uh, uh, making this area not only as a, a cross border area, but also as a Euro region that uh, brings people together and uh, we can uh, move on. And thinking on our next steps in, uh, let's say, in a, in, a, in our mutual uh, future. So I would like to thank CAS, uh, Lefteris Petropoulos especially, and the South uh, uh, SEE in Action team that uh, brought us together for this great uh, collaboration in an extremely topical issue. Uh, what are we going to see next, and uh, what, um, what 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 the uh, SEE in Action team uh, will present? Uh, are the findings of um, of, of, a, of a unique combination of uh, research projects. It's a bilateral copper, it's a bilateral project that uh, is addressed to people from Greece and to Macedonian people from uh, North Macedonia. Uh, what did we do? Uh, we compiled the questionnaire uh, that was based on the principles that Nikos uh, expressed uh, very uh, uh, thoroughly um, right before me. And we, had, we attempted to address the research questions on a behavioral and attitudinal way. Uh, so uh, we're trying to, to conceptualize, we're trying to capture what people believe, uh, what people think about the others, uh, what are the perspectives, and also what did they face? For example, what people that uh, uh, studied abroad think about the future, and what people that, that are studying uh, in uh, our area think about their future. Um, the uh, the project the, the field the field process of the project uh, was sequential and began in uh, December and ended in uh, February. We started in December by fielding the project uh, for the uh, Greek respondents, and I think uh, during the mid uh, January the the project was also fielded for the Macedonian uh, respondents. Uh, the sample size of the project uh, was approximately uh, 840 people. That is, it is also balanced. We have uh, uh, the half of the uh, sample size is our Macedonians, but the half of the sample size are Greeks. Um, the, the sample size is uh, pretty balanced, and especially in, uh, regarding the Greek responses, is very balanced among age groups and among uh, uh, gender uh, groups. So um, the, the, uh, the sample size, the sample regarding the Macedonian respondents is not so balanced in terms of the Greek respondents. For example, we have more respondents from lower ages than in uh, higher ages. But in both cases, the age range is between 17 and 40 years old. Um, one final remark regarding the uh, methodological aspects, the technical aspects of the analysis that uh, will be followed uh, is, is uh, to, to bear in mind that uh, uh, as we used to to call it in uh, uh, the sampling design, the sample, the sample process, the sampling process uh, was um, uh, the so-called convenient sampling. It was uh, 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 um, snowball, uh, snowball sampling in the case of uh, North Macedonia, but it was pretty well balanced and stratified sampling in the case of uh, Greece. So, uh, the bottom line is that uh, the, the insights and the value of the insights of uh, this research is extremely high. Of course, the reproducibility and the replicability of uh, some similar future studies will affirm or will shed some light in the insights that would be presented next. That's for, uh, that's for now. Uh, thank you for uh, once again for this collaboration.
Thank you very much, um, Dr. Siakas, for, the, for this information. Um, I would like to move on again uh, back to Nikos and uh, Egli for some presentation on the findings and also for uh, analysis and recommendations uh, that occurred out of this uh, outcome. So please, Great. the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you again, Anna. I will uh, start sharing uh, the PowerPoint again, the presentation. Uh, let me... Yes. Um, So uh, just to give you um, how we're going to do it, I will present the case of North Macedonia and uh, after me, Ehli, will go on presenting the Greek case. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to give you an overview. We will give you an overview in both cases about uh, the opinion of the participants on education, the domestic job market, and the salary levels and working conditions in both countries. When it comes to North Macedonia, um, the opinion about public and private education is it was um, negative and mostly negative and mixed. 29% uh, of the participants had a negative opinion on public and private education, uh, while 44% uh, had a mixed opinion, let's say neutral opinion, uh, neither positive nor negative. Uh, regarding uh, the job market, um, more than half of the respondents, you can see 6% of the respondents uh, said that there are some work opportunities in the country, but they are not enough. And this is right from the start, we had an indicator uh, regarding the issue of brain drain, like uh, immediately like a, a big number of people uh, gave us the answer that there are not enough opportunities for young people when it comes to work in the country. Uh, and moving again, moving on, um, on uh, regarding the working conditions and salary, salary levels, um, in uh, North Macedonia, 42% of the participants um, um, had a negative opinion, uh, while 38% uh, of them uh, had a mixed opinion. Uh, at this point, I would also like to mention, as you can see at the bottom of, uh, of the screen, the sample uh, in, the, in the Macedonian case was uh, 414 uh, participants. Uh, moving on. Um, the participants in the next set of questions, the participants were asked um, uh, to a few, a few question about whether they would uh, they would choose to stay in North Macedonia and study or move and study abroad if they had the chance uh, to do whatever they would like. Um, surprisingly, the the majority, almost almost fifty percent, forty as you can see, forty percent, forty nine percent to be precise. Uh, answered that they would uh, prefer to stay and study North Macedonia, uh, but again, it's not. It, uh, it was also a big number for around 40 percent uh, that also said that they would prefer uh, to study abroad. Uh, from the people that answered that they would like to study abroad, we asked them to give us like the, the main reasons that uh, would um, like make them to 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 do so. Uh, so uh, the top reasons uh, to study abroad for Macedonian um, for the Macedonian youth is uh, first of all they are looking for quality education, which is uh, which is very important. They are looking for better prospects and again for better quality of life. Uh, these were there were also other answers given, but uh, these uh, these were the top three answers uh, that the majority of the um, of the participants pointed out as the main reasons uh, to study abroad. Um, after the questions about uh, studying, uh, people were asked uh, whether they would, if they had the chance to both work uh, in North Macedonia or move uh, move abroad and work abroad, what they what they would choose. Um, again, in that case, we see the, a similar trend that uh, <clears throat> uh, that uh, prefer to stay and work in their home country. Sixty percent. And, and there's also 30% that said that they would prefer to, to work abroad if they had the chance. And um, again, which as we saw in the case of, uh, of studying, uh, when it comes to working, people prefer to stay in their home countries. But again, uh, they, they would prefer to do so, but that does not mean that they have the right conditions uh, that, that, that would allow them to do so. So uh, when, asked, when people were asked, uh, what are the reasons that would like, force them uh, to move and work abroad? Um, the top three that were mentioned were, first of all, higher salaries, 
uh, better quality of life and better working, uh, better working conditions. As we can see, uh, people, the quality of life is very important, is highly regarded uh, in the case of um, young people from North Macedonia. Uh, it was mentioned as the main reasons to move to study abroad. And again, it was mentioned again uh, as one of the main reasons uh, <clears throat> Uh, to move and um, to move and um, and work abroad. Um, you will moving on. Um, moving on, there was also there was also one last set of questions that focused not on the whole sample of uh, 414 people, but it focused only to the people that are currently uh, are currently working or studying abroad. That they are living abroad, and uh, we we asked them. Uh, they were they were they were asked to name the main difficulties of living, working, and um, and uh, and studying abroad. Uh, first of all, number one reason, as you will see, is it, going to be the same in, Gre in Greece, and it says a lot about the strong ties that we have uh, in our region. Uh, how families is highly valued uh, in the Balkans. Missing families, reason number one. Um, uh, it's number one difficulty for people who are living, working, and studying abroad. Uh, the living costs were also mentioned. Uh, the living costs are extremely high <clears throat> uh, in Europe uh, and in the United States. So they were mentioned. They were also mentioned as a, a major difficulty. And also the Macedonian uh, participants also mentioned the language barrier. Um, Moving on, they were, the participants were also um, asked uh, to name some differences between their home country and abroad, and um, what are what are the main differences from what they see from their own personal experience. Uh, and first of all, uh, it was the salaries. People, uh, it comes as no surprise. The salaries abroad uh, in um, in Western Europe or the United States are higher. So uh, this is reason number one. Uh, they also they also mentioned that um, abroad there are better career prospects. Uh, even if uh, the many participants mentioned that even if you lose your job or if you're forced to change uh, to change your job, there are career prospects and um, and there is they had like this positive um, this positive view of um, of work in general abroad. And finally, one thing that was mentioned by, by many participants was the treatment of the employee by the employer and the, superv or the supervisor. Uh, and this is something that uh, I think that we should always keep in mind, um, not only for, for, young, for young people um, in workplaces, but for the workforce in general, we have to create the right condition for the employees uh, in order to be productive and, and thrive in uh, the work environment. They have to have the right treatment uh, and create for them in a diverse and safe environment. Uh, finally, uh, the participants who are right now abroad um, from North Macedonia, they were asked uh, whether they, what are their, what are their, their plans. Um, this, um, the majority, more than half of them answered that they tend to stay abroad because they are satisfied there. And uh, this is, um, this answer, has needs to make us needs will make us think a lot about it that we have people do not want to come back so we have to create the right conditions to bring them back and this should be at the top of the agenda of um, of the politicians of the governments of the region that people need, we have to bring young people who, the young people who are the future of the country they need to come back and again 22% uh, of them also said that they would like to return to their home countries if there are more opportunities. These are these were the top two answers from the participants uh, from North Macedonia who are currently uh, living um, living abroad. So, as I said, we have to keep that in mind that uh, unless we do some drastic changes, um, people will keep on living and. Our countries are gonna uh, will continue losing uh, the most valuable part of the, of, uh, of 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 the society. Young people who are young, who are productive for the future of the country. Um, right now, I will now give the floor to my colleague Egli Sakelari, uh, who will speak about uh, the Greek case. 
Thank you, Nikos. And I would also like to briefly greet you all and express a big thank you to all of our partners who made our project uh, possible with their valuable uh, aid. Uh, so yeah, regarding the case of Greece, we gathered a total of 420 Greek respondents, uh, approximately 70% of them that currently uh, reside in uh, Greece, they live in Greece, while um, approximately 10% of them intend to move abroad in the near future, and also 15% of them that, that, that they are currently uh, living abroad, uh, either for study uh, or for work. So, um, as Nikos earlier said, uh, we wanted to better fathom what are the main causes behind this uh, phenomenon, the brain drain phenomenon, uh, so we felt it was uh, crucial to measure opinions regarding the quality of education, uh, the employment opportunities and the working conditions that people face now in their home countries, be it Greece or North Macedonia. Um, so as you can see, the majority of the Greek uh, participants on our research evaluates that both public and private universities um, uh, have, they have a, uh, a positive attitude um, uh, towards the, the quality of education that they uh, provide. 60% um, thinks that they are positive and 29% holds a neutral opinion. Um, as, uh, as one can see and can observe, only approximately 10% one, um, one, uh, out of uh, 100 believes that uh, we are having a negative attitude towards the Greek universities. But on the contrary, when it comes to reviewing the, dom the domestic uh, job market, we observe 56% uh, uh, of the answers being that there are some uh, work opportunities yet, but they're not sufficient enough. Uh, and on a parallel level, we see that salary levels and working conditions in Greece also seem to rather discourage young people. Uh, so as you can see, a whooping 80% of our respondents holds a negative opinion on the current situation when it comes to the working conditions in their uh, home country. Moving on to perceptions uh, about studying abroad, if Nikos could change the... Yes. Thank you. So yeah, about studying and uh, working abroad, if they had the chance, we can see that the youth pays a lot, uh, definitely a lot uh, of attention at the quality of services that they receive, just as much as the quality of the services that they provide. Uh, it has been pinpointed that majority would like to study abroad with a 53%, but we can see also that uh, a lot of them uh, are fine with studying uh, in Greece, 47% uh, um, of, of the answers given. Uh, going to our top three reasons why of, uh, um, of living and studying abroad, we can see that their focal point is the uh, networking support that they receive. Um, regarding the after-study prospects, which is maybe highlighting um, a, bigger, a bigger shortage in uh, Greece's educational structure about the networking support that we uh, receive as postgraduate or undergraduate students. However, when asked uh, about working in their home country or abroad, um, the majority uh, preferred to work in Greece, 50%, although of course there is a slight difference uh, between those that want to um, work, uh, work abroad instead of working in Greece. Um, yet it is once again prevalent that the, the motives, the incentives behind migrating happen to be uh, the higher salaries, a variety of job opportunities, uh, unlike those being offered in this. And last but not least, the, the conditions that predominate inside the, the working place, the workplace. 
Uh, moving further to the 77 of those that I mentioned earlier that have uh, been living abroad, currently been living, been living abroad or uh, been living abroad in the past and then having returned to their home country. We wanted to map their overall experience uh, following a more holistic approach by adding up both their, uh, um, their difficulties that they have to uh, come across when living abroad and also their uh, positive attributes that are being uh, added up by this uh, experience. Um, Nikos made a comment earlier that the missing uh, family section, the homesickness and the strong family ties run both in our veins and in the uh, neighboring countries' uh, veins in the Balkan Peninsula. So this is the first reason uh, behind uh, wanting to leave and return to their home country. It's because of the uh, strong family ties. Uh, also, there has been a slight uh, notice that Greeks also tend to believe that they are developing in a difficult way their human relationships abroad um, in comparison to uh, staying in their home country. And also, of course, the higher, higher living costs um, that are not being... Um, adding up their, their value, their experience. Um, another major difference is between their home countries and living abroad is also the higher salaries. It's the first one that is being uh, observed as the, uh, the number one factor of uh, motive. Uh, career prospects that are being um, offered and also the treatment of the employee but by the employer and supervisor, the respect that is being cultivated in the workspace beyond uh, the field of uh, productiveness. About their future plans, uh, we can see that 50% of them intend to stay abroad because they're satisfied by their lives there but also 46% would like to return to their home country if there were the right conditions that would allow them to live uh, satisfied as well because of uh, their strong family ties and the social environment that they grew up. And now I would like to present some of our graphs. Uh, we can see here, first of all, our demographic data about uh, the participants. Um, we can see that this, we had an even balance on uh, the gender participation, both in Greece and with a slightly, slightly bigger uh, change in North Macedonia, with the female and male participants or those who identify as other. Uh, and given the educational level of uh, our participants, uh, we had the majority of them uh, being masters or PhD uh, students uh, from the side of Greece and university graduates from the side of uh, North Macedonia and also a high percentage of high school graduates coming from uh, North Macedonia. Uh, moving on. Um, so we wanted also to, to see which are the preferred destinations, uh, both in Greece and in North Macedonia when it comes to study or work abroad. And when it comes to study, we see that um, the United Kingdom and the United States of America are the biggest two um, options uh, for Greek students, um, followed by the Netherlands and then Germany and the Scandinavian uh, region. Um, but then we can see that uh, it is more evenly distributed when it comes to North Macedonian students because they would uh, rather choose uh, Germany, United Kingdom, uh, Netherlands, and of course, Slovenia, um, which is a very interesting choice regarding that uh, Greek respondents did not think of this uh, Balkan country as a top destination to study, while North Macedonians did. Um, and when it comes uh, to reasons to study abroad, as I earlier mentioned, it's, um, it has to do with the, career, with the uh, after study career prospects. It's the number one reason for the Greek participants. Uh, better universities, which is also the first reason for uh, North Macedonian respondents as well. And then the overall better quality of life. Um, regarding the, the workspace, 
uh, if they choose to, they would choose to start to work abroad. Uh, Greeks would go to uh, the Netherlands and then Germany and Scandinavia, leaving the United Kingdom and the United States behind. Uh, and also, we can see that Germany is a big uh, um, uh, favorite of North Macedonian respondents, also. Um, but uh, we can see that from the side of North Macedonia, Greece has also been mentioned as a destination uh, to work, while uh, North Macedonia um, is not uh, such a popular option for, for the Greek side. Uh, and on the reasons to work abroad, uh, we yet again see a similar pattern on um, behaviors for um, and motives for working abroad in both countries uh, higher salaries better payment more employment opportunities uh, and then uh, the better working conditions as well uh, and our, on, our, on our last uh, the uh, on our last graph we can see that uh, these are the uh, difficulties that are being showcased uh, when studying or working uh, abroad. Uh, and it's, of course, the strong family ties and the homesickness that is produced by um, living your country, uh, the human relationships, and also the language barrier, which is being uh, highly mentioned uh, from the side of North Macedonia. And, of course, some other factors like the, the climate, uh, weather conditions, uh, the living costs, and of course we can see that it's not um, it's not the first choice, but it's also a very crucial factor um, as well, and it's the, the latest factor, the food uh, field of uh, uh, eating whatever your country has to offer and not preferring the uh, life abroad. Um, I think this is it for the, um, for our graphs and our presentation on the uh, on the results of our research. And now, Nikos, if you could proceed to the policy recommendations section. Yes, thank you, Eli. Uh Finally, um, of course, you can uh, you can see a, a lot more questions and a deeper analysis uh, if you if you read the report. Um, and now at the, at the last part of our research, uh, we came up with uh, certain targeted policy recommendations that we believe uh, could uh, help reversing this negative trend of brain drain and also contribute uh, in uh, the overall effort of creating the right conditions uh, in order to bring young people back to their home country or create the right conditions for them not to leave. Uh, first of all, the first policy recommendation is mostly targeted um, to North Macedonia, but also not only North Macedonia, but the Western Balkans uh, in general. Uh, of course, when we when we were um, when we were writing uh, this report uh, um, in early February, the war in Ukraine hadn't even started yet. Uh, so there is another reason. Um, to overcome the accession impasse of North Macedonia and the rest of the Western Balkan six. For, uh, the Western Balkans, um, the Western Balkans are part of Europe. Uh, their part is in the European Union, uh, and now it's even more vital than ever uh, for safety reasons too, uh, to include them uh, uh, in the European family. The EU accession of the Western Balkan six, namely North Macedonia, Albania, Serbia, Montenegro, Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Kosovo would gradually attract capital and investment, resulting in more employment opportunities, higher salaries, and improved working conditions. By advancing the principle of EU, European Union social market economy, uh, the suitable conditions that will be developed will motivate the citizens, and especially the young citizens of the wider Southeast Europe region to stay and thrive in their home country. This is one of the many reasons why the Western Balkans should, why the accession process should be accelerated is in order to give hope to young people, hope in general, not just for the for their, uh, future of their studies or the future of, uh, of their work, of their careers. They should, they should be given the hope that things will get better, the situation in their home countries will improve, so they will have um, 
the, the emotional capacity to stay and strive in their own in their own in their own home countries uh, to create a better future for themselves. The second one is increased and targeted investment in education and research. Allocating more funds in education is necessary for preparing the future workforce of the country, of both countries, to be precise, which will be the focal point of its long-term prosperity. More specifically, further investments in tertiary education are needed in order to improve the quality and the diversity of the offered fields of study and available research resources and equipment. This will create favorable conditions for aspiring and highly educated and skilled individuals to pursue their goals without having to migrate. Innovation and employment opportunities. Uh, we should encourage investments in innovative technologies and green jobs. The world may be changing rapidly, presenting serious challenges. We had the pandemic right now, we have the war in Ukraine, but at the same time, this comes with new opportunities for lasting positive transformations. Digitalization and sustainability uh, and sustainability policies which are prevalent in the EU agenda have the capacity to transform the labor market. The countries of the region need to step up investment in digital and high-tech jobs, as well as jobs that will be the outcome of the ongoing energy transition and the gradual shift to renewable energy sources. This will ensure that the Southeast Europe region will not be left behind in comparison with countries uh, um, from Western Europe that have already heavily engaged in this transform transformative process. Ensure quality working conditions. Um, developing and strengthening the existing legal framework and adjusting it to the emerging needs also associated with the new forms of work that uh, came up during the pandemic, uh, you name it, hybrid, virtual, remote, will ensure that employees will not be subject to unfair treatment and breaches to their rights. In addition, reinforcing monitoring mechanism and irregular checks and controls to safeguard the alignment with the legal framework will provide the workforce with increased security. It is very important for the employee, for, for the employers to feel safe in the workplace, to, to feel that they are respected and that their rights are respected. And this is and it's very important not only for young workers, for young people, for young people, but also for the for the workforce of a country in general. Finally, there is regional cooperation and enhanced information in the Southeast Europe region. This is a more general Polish recommendation that it is also interconnected with the work that our organization in Action is doing. Uh, as we saw in the, in the analysis, and you, you can see it uh, when you will read the report, many young citizens from Greece and North Macedonia have not even considered the possibility of working in the region. While people from North Macedonia consider Slovenia and Greece for their studies, this does not apply for Greeks. We believe that, to a certain extent, this is the result of lack of information. Therefore, we actively support the establishment of bilateral youth offices in Greece and North Macedonia, following the footsteps of Germany and France and the successful example of the Franco-German youth, um, youth offices. By participating and supporting the cooperation for a common future initiative with our partners Youth Alliance Crucible, Scene Action aims to foster regional cooperation and increase the flow of information for available educational and employment opportunities in the Balkans and the wider Southeast Europe region. Um, this is all from us regarding the report. Uh, I, again, I would like to thank my colleagues, uh, Egil Sakelari and George Kukos, uh, for, um, it, was, it was a very pleasant ride, I would have to say, to, pre to create this uh, report. And now I would like uh, to give the floor back to Anna. Um, well, thank you a lot, Nikos, for this very enlightening uh, presentation and uh, for all the information you provided, uh, not only us, but also the audience. Um, I will stick a little bit to this uh, to this recommendation of ensuring, uh, you know, uh, quality working conditions and uh, with respect also to uh, the prevalent preference of Greek people working in the United Kingdom. So needless to say, United Kingdom yesterday uh, implemented the pilot uh, uh, um, employment style of four days per week um, for a couple of months. but. Uh, Compare, this comparing, you know, to the conditions uh, for young people working in the Greek islands at the moment, I think uh, it makes sense why people, you know, would like to try something in Western Europe. And uh, uh, before closing, I would like uh, some um, 
comments from uh, Professor Maradzidis uh, from uh, the Department of Balkan Slavic and Oriental Studies of the University of Macedonia. So please, uh, Mr. Maradzidis. Thank you very much, Anna, uh, for this invitation to participate in this very interesting meeting. Uh, it was a pleasure to, to cooperate with SCE in action, especially uh, with Egli, uh, Sakyalari and Nikos Bakirjis. Uh, and of course, uh, to, to participate to this survey that uh, I feel uh, um, shows, the results shows, the findings shows that uh, some uh, elements still persist, uh, are repeated again and again, um, and show how the deep flows, if you like, of Greek and North Macedonian economy um, affects the, the, the whole structure, uh, the whole society structure, and especially, particularly, uh, the youth. So, I, I will try very quickly to, to, to present two, three uh, different uh, comments um, regarding this survey, this report, and of course, this discussion today. Um, first of all, it is clear to me, and I think to everyone in this meeting, that despite differences among uh, Balkan countries regarding the GDP per capita, for example, the international position of the, the different countries, the social structure, culture, national culture, the, the, the recent political and financial developments. It is, it is clear that this phenomenon brain drain um, is a common element uh, that affects um, all the Balkan countries, more or less. And I think this, this is a story of a failure. I don't have time to, to, to explain uh, how um, big and how deep is this failure, but it's a failure. And comparing, for example, other parts of Europe, and I, I don't, uh, I'm not referring to Western Europe, of course, but Central Europe, Europe that came from a communist past uh, like the Balkan countries, the majority of the Balkan countries in, in, in the Central European continent, uh, Czech Republic, for example. It is clear to me that what, what happened here, it's, it's a story of a failure that we should uh, discuss a lot. And if, if, if you permit me to, to say about Greece, because I know Greece better than the other Balkan countries, it is clear that if we, we, sh we see all the main factors, all the main, uh, the, the, the key elements of the, the, the last uh, 30, 40 um, years of uh, Greek participation in uh, European Union, it seems that is a big failure. It's not simply a failure. So I think this is uh, the, the major um, conclusion that I, I, I can give the, 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 the general picture. The second um, remark, which is something that with Yorgos Siakas we, um, we used to, to discuss a lot, is that everybody uh, in the Balkans, and uh, we, we speak now about youth, but in general uh, concerns also all the, the, the society, all the different uh, parts of social groups, if you like, um, look towards the West. When we talk about employment, when we talk about education, when we talk about standard of living, when we talk about environment, it's clear to us that uh, people uh, believe that uh, in the West, they live better. In the West, they are better paid. In the West, they have better education. So the, it's, I think, um, a, a, another common element in this survey uh, which characterizes everyone in our region that we know clearly that 
the main standard of life, uh, work and education in Western European region is far better than what we live in, uh, uh, in the Balkans in Southeastern Europe. Third remark, um, there is, which is striking, um, it, it was a kind of surprise for me that perceptions about education and about high education mostly um, seem quite irrelevant um, concerning the, regarding the brain drain phenomenon. I mean that what we have seen is um, comparing North Macedonia and Greece, uh, youth in Greece and North Macedonia, um, it's, it's quite different. I mean, in, in Greece, people, the majority of uh, the, the answers say that uh, um, they are happy or they are sat satisfied or they, they think that high education, higher education is, is good uh, um, or something like that. Uh, they have a positive idea, a positive perception about higher education. On the contrary, there is um, in North Macedonia a negative uh, majority and a negative um, uh, stance about higher education there. But even if we have this kind of, of differences, the, the results are exactly the same. People um, understand in the region that the problem is not only what kind of quality um, um, uh, is, how can I say, characterized, what kind of, how good is national education. The problem is how national education and especially higher education universities could relate it, could link to uh, opportunity career. So you can have a very good uh, higher education universities, uh, I don't know Harvard, Yale, Stanford, I'm joking, of course, but if those universities don't lead to opportunity careers, don't, are, are, are not related to the, the economy, to, to, um, to career opportunities, this is insufficient, is almost, almost nothing. Um, I, th I think that, and I, I go to, to, to the end. I, I think that this survey, this report is um, very interesting and of course very, um, could be help. It's very helpful for people who, who really want to um, um, see this uh, problem as a very urgent problem for the future of the region. Because in fact, as Nikos Bakerjis told in the beginning, the problem is not only that people um, leave the country and go to, to other countries to, to work and to live. The, the problem is that um, the regional countries uh, are losing a very important part of the future elite of the country, of the, the region, and this affects not only the demography, but affects uh, all the aspects of our social life and institutions in the future. Uh, and this is very serious. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to thank you very much, um, uh, Professor Maratidis, for these uh, remarks and um, uh, for for these comments. Uh, I I really appreciate the fact that um, uh, also the academia uh, supports you know this kind of efforts in terms not only of um, uh, conducting a research but also our efforts for promoting the issue of brain drain as an as an urgent issue. And uh, before closure, I would uh, like uh, just to thank you all for your presence here today. I would also like to thank uh, the audience uh, that uh, attended this event online through uh, social media. And um, I will stick personally to uh, the previous recommendation that uh, regional cooperation might be the key for um, encouraging young people to restore their trust into the region. 
So in this uh, positive thinking, I would like to thank you all for being here and uh, wish you all a ha to have a nice evening. So good evening. Bye.